Attention, the following video is totally going to kick ass. If you enjoy any of it or have a large <laughs> please click the sub and like button below. Enjoy. Being healthy. Or the win. Sonic is my this way is to swag, This is an intro. Hey YouTube, Azich Foy here, and today I'll be reacting to a new Jaden animation called I Found Out I Have ADHD. Another life story, backstory of a Jaden animations. This is going to be fun to watch. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the reaction video. Watch the original video first. Subscribe to Jaden Animations. Subscribe to my channel down below. Hit that like button. Ring that bell notification. Without further ado, we're going to get started. Three, two, one. Let's go. Do you ever think to yourself, man, why is it so hard for me to just do the things I need to do and focus and remember things and manage my time and be organized and remember yep. things and not get sidetracked? <laughs> ha! Yeah, me neither. When I was a kid, I was pretty much the picture perfect depiction of a good student. I was well organized, always turned in my work on time, got good That's days. good. I even did my homework on Fridays instead of procrastinating until Sunday night. Sure, I didn't like studying and found it hard to focus during it, but who didn't? Seeing all those qualities put together, that wow. doesn't sound like the brain of someone with any kind of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, does it? I was well behaved, didn't feel like I struggled much in school, and didn't cause any trouble. Ah. That is... Up until I moved out of my parents' house for the first time to go to college. Gradually, I started slipping. I began skipping classes at Damn. Night, I just didn't feel like going, would wait until the last moment to start classwork, and lost a lot of motivation because I wasn't interested in any of my schoolwork. But overall, even though it was pretty out of character for me, I chalked it all up to the fact I was simply over going to school. At the same time, uh? my YouTube was really kicking off, and all I wanted to do was that. Of course I wasn't gonna be <laughs> as good of a student when the silly YouTube videos were doing numbers. I finished a single year of college and convinced my parents to let me take a gap year to see where this YouTube thing can take me. Spoiler alert, the gap year turned into me never going back. I'm a college dropout. So Damn. Well, I've eliminated the boring school part of my life that weighs me down. Now I can go back to being organized with my new exciting passion job, which entails being my own boss and having to manage and assign myself all of my own responsibilities 24 7. Why are the voices not getting quieter? It's almost Jeez. like everything was going backwards. I was having a much harder time staying organized and focused. If I didn't want to do a certain type of work, I would have to shackle myself down in basically an isolation chamber to be able to get it done. Finding Damn. a new interest, it was all I could think about. And why is it so easy to suddenly be on your roof watching a YouTube video on how to know when you need new shingles? I really <laughs> didn't yeah. get it. Child me had it held together more than current me. What went wrong? I could look back and recognize how because used being to be a child so you didn't need to do anything like tiny Jaden and all her ducks in that responsible I used to color code every single binder I owned and now I don't even know where I placed the 20 bucks I literally just had in my hand three minutes ago I haven't even left the room genuinely where could it can go despite oh. feeling like I was <laughs> downward spiraling for multiple years I never suspected it could be something related to a genetic neurodevelopmental disorder I just thought I wasn't trying hard enough and being lazy or applying myself like I used to. Oh, the woes of turning into an adult, I suppose. Maybe the best years of your life truly are in high school. Yeah. How upsetting. I didn't even enjoy those either. But then one day I got a text from my brother. I got diagnosed with ADHD. It was a pretty big surprise for me because growing up, he never really seemed to show any of the typical symptoms you associate with ADHD. You know, yeah. people would always describe ADHD to me as super hyper kids who would run around the room and scream and generally be a lot. That wasn't my brother. He was quiet and well behaved like I was. But was when it he ADD? Explaining his symptoms, the gears started turning. Yeah, I've always struggled a lot with focusing in school and having things hold my attention when it's boring. But like, I could hyper fix it on things I'm interested in and get really passionate about that stuff. Hearing him talk about his personal symptoms of ADHD made a lot of sense and I felt very freshly educated on the topic. And you'd think well, that I would immediately start looking into getting a diagnosis for myself because if you were paying attention, my brother's experiences all sounded very similar to the same struggles I've been having in my own life but related to work and <sighs> school. Excuse me. Out. But Ooh, no, stretching. I was just like, good for you, bro. Happy for you. 
Or, I'm sorry, I don't know. Anyway, back to <laughs> struggling to simply open up my drawing program as if two blocks of iron were welded to my wrists. Imbalance of brain chemicals? <laughs> nah, this just happens from time to time. It's normal. Just the laziness kicking in. I, I hate Monday, yeah. am I right? Even though I didn't instantly think there was a possibility of me also having ADHD, the mental seed was planted. It's genetic, so I knew subconsciously it ran in the bloodline. It took a few years after my brother was diagnosed for me to really sit down with myself and consider that I too could have ADHD. Shocking revelation, I know. Foreshadowing, where did you come from? Things in the focus and productivity department were just getting worse and worse. I had the attention span of a cartoon dog, would completely forget things <laughs> that entered my head, would hyperfixate on random stuff like an addict, and there was constant civil war happening inside my head to get one thing done, even though I knew it would only take like 15 minutes. <laughs> you don't understand. It feels like physical torture to make myself sit down and lip sync a simple scene like most of the time you know the thing i've been doing for 10 years at this point and am definitely used to doing and yeah once i've gotten going then i'm honed in and you have to pry me away from it with a crowbar i'm aware of that part but nah i'm still gonna scrap with myself to plant my ass in that chair because damn I don't, I don't even know why at this point. The biggest thing holding me back from feeling like I had ADHD has always been the simple memory of being in school and having my shit together. I know what it feels like to be on top of things and to be organized. I had it all in the palm of my little child hand. I just needed to summon it again with a bit yeah. of effort. But a light switched off in my brain and suddenly I'm just not capable of the things I used to be and it feels pathetic simple tasks are such a mental burden it feels like i'm out of control but can't do anything about it so Poor finally, i figured i would try and get myself diagnosed what did i have to lose if anything they just tell me no you don't have adhd try a little harder and stop complaining and yes of course it took me like eight months after deciding to get diagnosed to schedule the actual appointment what did you expect that's like the first check mark box on the adhd list i started seeing a psychologist and he would ask the typical do you have a hard time focusing and i'd go yeah like this one time yesterday and then he writes something down as i continue rambling on this hyper specific example way too long for a neurotypical person i met with him Jeez. for a few weeks and then it came down to diagnosis day the nerves man i was so ready for him to say i'm a normal person who needs to suck it up but instead he was like Okay, so yeah, you definitely exhibit symptoms of someone with the inattentive type of ADHD. Oh. <laughs> and autism. Yippee! My oh, wow. Are justified. I'm not crazy. Wait, wait, what was that last part? He explained all the different ways ADHD affects me and the different areas I struggle with compared to others. He even gave me a 37 page document of oh, geez. and information on how my brain works with graphs and pictures. I've read through it all a bunch of times now, and it's already really helped me understand how I tick. I call them the autism docs, but I'm, I'm not going to get into that side of the diagnosis. Let's just, let's, let's just brush that one away for now. There's a couple types of ADHD you can have. Hyperactive, inattentive, and combined, which is both hyperactive and inattentive. Hyperactive okay. is the type people typically go to when they think of a loud kid who can't sit still. People with this kind normally need to fidget, have low patience, tend to talk a lot, and have trouble staying seated, especially when they're expected to, like, in a meeting or school. Inattentive is the one where someone experiences difficulty in focus, memory, organization, has a low attention span. That's the one I have. It's self-explanatory, but if you have the combined type of ADHD, then you got it all. ADHD jackpot right there, my friend. Damn! During the appointments that I used to be such a good kid in school with seemingly zero ADHD symptoms, and how that part is- That's a lie! Me, the symptoms- a couple hypotheses about The symptoms- it. One, since my mom has always been a big oh. source of my organizational influence, I was able to depend and lean on her for the majority of my school life for it. I felt like I was naturally capable of staying on top of things because she was right behind me the whole time reminding me and guiding guiding me through stuff. Yep. So when I moved out, everything started crumbling, which lines up pretty perfectly to when I did start struggling. Another explanation he gave was the fact that ADHD affects women differently than men, which is also less researched. 
Love to hear that one. Not only do women tend to be able to mask their symptoms better than guys, so it goes much more unnoticed, but they also experience ADHD differently. And research yeah. says there's a chance it can just start affecting women later in life. I'm no ADHD scientist though. That's just what I've been told by specialists. I don't know. I've just got the dang thing. Either way, yep. those two explanations make she a just lot got of sense it. to me and have since put my weird ADHD imposter syndrome to rest. I didn't really think that getting a diagnosis would change much about how I go about my life, but since getting my ADHD certificate and lollipop, it's completely <laughs> revolutionized how I think and go about getting things done. It's still hard to get my ass into gear when I need to do one normal thing Big that's time. not difficult, but I'm much less hard on myself and will strike almost like these kinds of mental deals to loophole myself into getting things done. Like that's for good. example, if I really don't want to edit a video, I'll say to myself, Okay, I know it's gonna be super hard for me to immediately start that task, so I'll get myself into the mindset of getting things done by doing a simple other task I don't find difficult, like cleaning my room. That way, <laughs> I can feel productive and can transition that into tackling the original task much easier. It doesn't always work, but it's the mindset change. Okay, and that's a good tactic. That sometimes I'm Technique. gonna have to go about things in different ways. That's helped me a lot. Also, after being diagnosed with ADHD, I didn't have much desire to get medicated. I figured just knowing I have it would be enough to get things into gear and I didn't really need medication that badly. But the content creator in me also thought, well, if I'm gonna write a script about having ADHD, it would be nice to be able to talk about what it's like to be medicated, even just for a day. So I got prescribed good old classic instant release Adderall. Instant release means I don't have to take it every day. I can just take it when I need to get stuff done. It affects Big me time. immediately and then wears off after a few hours. There's also extended release, which is the kind you take every day and gives you a constant steady stream of medication. It wasn't until I had the Adderall in my hands when I uh -oh. realized the idea of taking it for the first time made me nervous. Like, what is this thing gonna do to me? I have so many friends with ADHD. Honestly, I'll Yeah, me too. It would be like that. That's how it goes in content creation. All these MFs have it. They were all telling me that it's awesome, how you'll take it and immediately feel like a god, and you can do a anything, god. it's incredible. And yeah, that sounds great, but also like, what the hell? <laughs> what do you mean I take this little pill and suddenly all of my problems seemingly disappear and I gain superpowers? That's scary. That sounds like the thing every <laughs> adult in a 20 mile radius warned us about when hey you're sonic ready. am i gonna feel like a completely different person i don't know if i'm ready to experience immortality i put off taking adderall for so long because i was irrationally scared of the tiny blue pill but <laughs> incidentally I really needed to get a script done. If I take too long to write a video script, then the team runs out of work to do. And then I have a bunch of people sitting around and waiting for me to give them more work so they can pay their bills and survive and stuff. But for the freaking life of me, I just could not get myself to sit down and write that script. My body and soul found it mentally easier to backflip off a bridge than write words on the computer. After literally oh boy. two months of my brain going, Ooh, you better write that script. I won't <laughs> let you enjoy a single moment of your life if you aren't writing that script. I don't wanna. Get up, go to the bridge. After that constant loop, Dang. I finally swallowed my fears and took my first Adderall. I had talked to James a lot about what Adderall is like since he's been on it for a few years now. And after I took one, I was messaging him like, I did it, I ate an Adderall. How long does it normally take to start? How do I know? What do I do? And he was helping me a lot and giving me tips. Then like 20 minutes later, I felt it. All the oh, wow. thoughts going on in my brain Voices. was silent. I could think clearly and in like a line. My mind wasn't racing a mile a minute. I was able to sit behind my laptop and write. It was incredible. I was messaging all my friends about it the entire time. I can write my script and not get distracted. I don't have to take a mental break every 10 minutes. I can remember things. Kelsey sent yep. me a message and I thought, I'll check that in a bit. And I remembered to check it in a bit. 
and respond. When I opened a new tab to look something up, I didn't go down a random unrelated rabbit hole. I picked up <laughs> my phone to check something and didn't impulsively scroll Twitter for an hour. I can write Damn. words so easily. How am I doing this? What do you mean I can feel like this whenever I want if I just eat the tiny blue pill? I refuse to believe regular people can function like this on a daily yeah. basis. No way. It wouldn't be fair. You guys don't have loud non-stop voices in your heads preventing you from doing normal things. Come on, just admit it. You can't pick something up and immediately keep remembering what you were supposed to be doing with it you <laughs> always forget and feel crazy. yeah big time come on come on i was so suspicious that on adderall either nothing would happen and i just wouldn't feel anything or i would feel like i'm a totally different person experiencing some higher than life manic episode but no, yep i just nope. felt like myself but with my shit together. And that's the part I couldn't believe. After two months of war, I finally was able to plant myself down and write my damn script. You wanna know what script I wrote while experiencing Adderall for the first time? Yeah, what'd you write? This one. I was struggling ADHD to write a script. script about ADHD, and the thing that finally pulled it out of me was Adderall. Come on, you gotta admit that's funny. Yeah, it was great. I didn't think my head was mm. loud before, or I was that impulsive, or had that hard of a time focusing. But now that I've been able to peacefully sit in one spot for hours and not need to take a break or check social media or get distracted by that's some good. stupid tangent I don't actually care about, yeah, this changes things. I still can't believe what I was able to accomplish. Writing a script in three hours. Compared to my typical 12 hours, aka one mediocre thing with no struggle at all. And you want to know what I did right after I wrote this script? Why? I immediately got up and cleaned the bird's room without rotting in bed for three hours beforehand. I just went from one task to another. Without Yay! Thinking, all you neurotypical people must be thinking I'm literally pathetic and useless, but I know my ADHD brethren are out of their chairs right now hearing that. I'm not standing before you all to give you scientific data and information on ADHD or diagnose you or even promote prescribed drugs. I'm just here to talk about a big and recent experience in my life, how much of an impact and effect it's had on me, and how awesome feeling normal is. Seriously, being able to take a deep breath in mental silence is oh, incredible. Cherish that feeling yep. if you don't have a neurodevelopmental disorder. It took me 26 years to realize my woes were not actually woes. <laughs> symptoms of brain chemical deficiency. I'm oh, wow. Here, all things considered, pretty recently after being diagnosed, and I'm still trying to learn how to rebuild my life in a way that lets me optimize my productivity and get things done at a normal level. But so far, I've come so much further than I thought I could simply by knowing what's going on up there in the old noodle. And Adderall. If you're on the fence about being diagnosed with something, I get it. It's scary. It's scary to think you might have it. I don't it, have a disability. And it's also scary to think you might not have it. It's an odd place to be. But for me, having a concrete answer from a professional is what got me to finally stop feeling stuck in place and actually start moving forward again. It's been great. I'm excited to keep learning more things about how my mind works and find new ways to improve my day-to-day -day life. Cheers to getting normal shit done. In case you missed it, I have new merch. For a limited time, you can get yourself a new and improved Ari plush and a I wanna get that. new yeah. Ari jacket. I'm I getting that hoodie. Products, and up until June 23rd, they could be all yours. If you miss it, you'll never know how fluffy and pillowy the jacket is. Oh, it's like a cloud. Or how cuddly and friend-shaped the plush is. Plus, it's a great way to support both me and the team while we continue okay. to make animations for you. Check them out at jadenanimations.com. Thanks for watching the video, and good luck simply exactly Existing to all my ADHD brethren out there. Well, right I hope you. I believe one day you'll respond to that message in your inbox. Hang in. Well, there. well, I hope you enjoyed the reaction video of Jaden Animations. That was fun to watch. Um, and yeah, wow. I, so that's how ADHD gets treated by using the pill adrenal or something. But okay. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the reaction video. I'll see you later. Peace. Stay healthy for the win.